if you look back on some of your most important decisions, let's say in your 20s or when you studied, is there anything we can highlight there that you feel set you up to give you a great platform? No, and, and I, I know you wanted to go this route, but I have to say I don't feel successful and I'm certainly not someone that anyone should try to copy in any shape or form. But, you know, for me, it was a random walk, as I said, uh, to some extent, I came into this business. But but maybe if I may just extend your question to say what what keeps me in the market at this high age, uh, probably. Right. I, I think this is the most fascinating uh, game is wrong because that this, this sort of demeanors the uh, what is going on. I think this is the, the most difficult exercise in the world, maybe except for predicting the weather. And, and I think every time I'm just about to understand the rules of the games, they change the rules uh, on me. So something else pops up. I need to be uh, you know, going on and researching something else. So for me, this quest for understanding, the quest for information means that if I go to the hairdresser, I read every single women's magazine. If I go to uh, my, my, you know, another to, to SAS's lobby at, at, at uh, Fornibu, I, I read all the magazine. I'm always looking for that, just that one tiny bit of information that can give me the ability to understand the world better. So I, I love that. And I think, you know, I've always entirely been driven by my, my thirst for information and, and for understanding. And, and I think to that extent, I'm living up to what I try to teach my children, which is that just follow your heart. Screw, screw what dad thinks, screw what uh, you know, your, your peer group thinks you should do. You have to do what you want to do simply because your, your stamina and your CPU is much better used to something you really like. And, and you know, now I'm at an age where a lot of my colleagues are starting to consider let me put it that way, to retire. I have no concept of the idea of retiring. I'm going to be trading and analyzing till I die, uh, which hopefully is going to be far away. So I expect to be around for another 30, 35 years, uh, Chris. Even when you get grandchildren, I will still be trading uh, if, if I have anything to, uh, to say in that matter. Incredible. Let's talk about uh, macro. Why are you so interested in that aspect? I mean, you're probably interested in everything related to finance, but still you like to have this overview and go from there. Can you just explain how you ended up there? Was it randomness that as well? Or is it something that you feel there is a spe specific reason for being so focused on that? No, so, so I think that, you know, like a, an operational process or education, you start in, in, in preschool where you learn to interact with other children. Then you start to learn the letters. Then all of a sudden you can read. Then you finance that and you figure out that by the time you get to seven, eighth, ninth grade, you know, I'm very good at math. I'm very good at history. I like to write. I don't like to write. So I think as, as you work through life cycles, I think you're refining what you're good at. I, I, I've never had a real job. I've always been in banking. Uh, I've had the opportunity to work in, uh, in, in, in the US. I had the opportunity to use in, in, uh, in the UK to work even in Norway. I even done that. Uh, so so for, for me, it's, you're refining your skills. And ultimately, I'm not very good at anything really, except maybe for one thing. I am relatively OK to take a huge amount of information and then almost immediately know what is important relatively to what is going on in the world. So my my skill is exactly that macro overview skill, knowing that that uh, women's magazine I, I read about uh, some new behavioral science that is you know the reason why women buy X Y Z. All of a sudden I can adapt that to you know longevity studies, which by the way have you know potential upside of twenty five percent. So that's the really to be brutally honest, and I know everyone is always trying to be you know, humble, but I'm really only good at one thing, and that is taking a huge amount of information, which is, as you defined it yourself, really about being a macro guy with a big overview. So my business today is to try to put probabilities on the future, never, ever trying to convince you or my clients or anyone I advise on my, what, what I think is right. But I'm always trying to say, OK, this window, I think there is an 80 percent probability we have an energy crisis. Last year, the year before last, we said, you know what? Probability of green transformation becoming the major issue is large because it came immediately after me traveling around the world this time of year three weeks globally and everywhere I touched down, there was forest fires, there was flooding, there was some 
you know, nature phenomenon that dictated to me as a person, as an individual, but also as an investor, there will be ramification, there will be consequences. And I went back straight from that trip and said, you know what, in 2021, the focus is going to be green transformation. So, you know, the, your willingness to be open, your willingness to be wrong, and, and, and at all time being thirsty on, 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 on understanding things is really macro to me. But having said that, the breed of all classic macro guys like me, it's a very, very small group of people today because, of course, we have been replaced by a text algorithm that analyzes whether data are good or bad. But fortunately, I think, to some extent, I think macro is coming back. I think the next 10 years in the market for you and everyone else will be the most interesting ever because we are at a place in history, at a place in terms of the uh, inequalities uh, uh, defined as a large uh, uh, spectrum is the biggest ever. And, and there will be repercussions, there will be pushbacks, there will be new initiatives being made. And, and I think at the center of this sits something which is very dear to Norway, of course, sits the energy and the energy prices and that whole conversation.